Hi, this is Mike from Mimaception.com and we are starting first with the question of why we should encrypt data. Let's take a simple example. Here we have Alice and she is working hard on her business. She saves a lot of files on her notebook. Files that contain very important and personal information. These days she has very fast access to this data. However, Alice is often traveling and needs to have her notebook with her. Fortunately, she has created an account in the operating system and uses a very strong password. This way, no one should actually be able to access her data without authorization. What happens now if Alice loses her notebook or it's stolen? Is her data still safe? Well, the thief cannot log on to the operating system. But all data in the notebook is usually stored on one or more hard disks. If this data is not encrypted, the hard disk can be easily removed and read by another PC. Only if Alice encrypts her data explicitly, no one can read her data in case of theft. Each file is stored only encrypted on the hard disk and the thief sees only encrypted data. The encryption can be done either by the hard disk itself, for example with a self-encrypting drive, or Alice uses software to encrypt her data such as BitLocker or VeraCrypt. The same applies to USB sticks. Here encryption is also the only way to protect the data from unauthorized access. Especially here, encryption is very important because USB sticks are much easier to lose. In this course, I offer you videos in the area of data encryption where I show some examples of hardware and software encryption. In hardware encryption, I will show you how a self-encrypting drive works. I will also introduce you to the tools VeraCrypt and BitLocker. These are tools with which you can encrypt your data on the basis of a software. Okay, that was easy to understand. Let's look at another scenario. Alice works a lot from home and uses a router to communicate on the internet. Using wireless LAN, she can send emails from anywhere with her notebook for example. What happens now if Mallory can listen to or even control Alice's communication? In the simplest case Mallory can do this if the wireless LAN is not encrypted. Many of us have a router that provides the connection to the internet. And nowadays, notebooks communicate with the router via wireless LAN. These data packets can be intercepted by anyone in the near area. And if they are not encrypted or not encrypted securely enough, Mallory can control the connections to the router. With the wireless LAN protocol, WEP, for example, this is no longer a problem for Mallory to listen on the connection. Therefore, the wireless LAN protocol WPI2 should be used because this is currently considered secure enough. Okay, let's expand this scenario. Through her business, Alice has a large network of friends and customers and she regularly communicates with them over the internet. And here it happens that her data and information is transported through many servers. 
What actually happens when Malloy has access to one or more servers? It means Malloy has the logical or physical access to the data lines and thus controls the complete data traffic. Sometimes you read in the news that one or another important server of a company has been hacked. This happens when the server was not secured enough or often vulnerabilities in the operating systems are exploited. And if Malloy succeeds in doing that, then he can control the connections between participants here as well. Malloy could thus actively listen on Alice's communication, for example. When Alice thinks she is communicating with Bob independently, in reality, Malloy is controlling the messages. So, if Malloy has taken control of a server, what can he do now? Malloy can do something with the data. Well, if Alice exchanges important information over a connection with Bob, then Malloy can analyze the data. For example, if Alice enters credentials, Malloy can capture and store them. Encrypting data can help here, of course. In TLS connections, for example, all data in an active connection is encrypted on the transport path between Alice and Bob. Even if Malloy is listening to this line, the data is encrypted. Using a combination of symmetric and asymmetric encryption called hybrid encryption, Alice can also leave messages on the server that Bob can read later. This works even if Malloy has taken over the server. This is because he cannot exploit the encrypted information. I created the video Confidential of Data in this course. There I explain how this works exactly. Malloy can modify data without being noticed. Okay, if the data is encrypted, then that's not a problem. But sometimes data is not encrypted because it's not secret. In emails, for example, Alice can present information about her products to her customers. Such mails are rarely encrypted because their information is not secret as well. If Malloy controls the connection, he can manipulate such mails. For example, he could change the prices. How can Alice make sure that even without encrypting the content, her emails are delivered to Bob completely and unchanged? The solution is called digital signature. Here, the actual data is not encrypted. Instead, a hash value is calculated over the data and this is encrypted by Alice. A digital signature ensures the integrity of the mail. I created the video Integrity and Digital Signature in this course. There I explain how this works exactly. I also created a separate section Digital Signature for you where I also show you practical examples. Okay, by using a digital signature, Alice can ensure the integrity of her emails. But how does Bob know that a certain email was really created by Alice? Malloy can also digitally sign an email. It's very easy to fake the sender of an email these days. So how can Alice digitally secure the integrity of herself? A digital certificate is a digital proof of identity where Alice can secure her identity. When you digitally sign your emails, your digital certificate is also added. And when the email signature is verified, Alice's information is displayed. A digital certificate works like an analog ID card. It can be used to identify the owner of data. I created the video Authenticity and Digital Certificate in this course. There, I explain how this works exactly. I also created a separate section Digital Certificate where I also show you practical examples. Okay, let's summarize. If a Malloy is not allowed to analyze the data or read sensitive information, then it must be encrypted. Mostly symmetric encryption is used here. If data is to be encrypted for other recipients such as Bob, then asymmetric encryption is also used. The combination of symmetric and asymmetric encryption is called hybrid encryption.
If Alice wants to secure the integrity of data, then it must be digitally signed. If Mallory then changes data, then this can be noticed by a digital signature. If Alice wants to secure the integrity of herself, then she needs a digital certificate. If Mallory wants to impersonate Alice, then this can be detected by a digital certificate. Thank you.